In this video, you're going to hack the cloud. I'm gonna show you. And what you'll learn is that it's actually not that hard, which is kind of scary if I'm being honest. And speaking of scary, you don't be scary. Because disclaimer, I'm actually gonna be showing you real hacking techniques, and they should only be used ethically, which will always involve explicit permission and following all the rules. That being said, the targets and methods I demonstrate in this video are ethical. So let's proceed. Here's our mission, our target, AWS, the largest cloud provider in the world, and also where the internet kind of lives. They have this thing called S3, or the Simple Storage Service. It's just storage. So think external hard drive or Google Drive, except it's where companies put their stuff, and also where <laughs> the internet is stored. It's this service, Amazon S3, that we're going to hack. Like, imagine if someone hacked your Google Drive or Dropbox. What would they find there? Don't tell me, I don't wanna know. Or comment below, I don't know how open you are. So we're doing that same thing to companies. Ethically, of course. Now, this isn't anything new. Companies have been hacked in this way for a while. The cloud is a wild place and it's prone to misconfigurations. Like, check out this article. Leaky buckets. That'll make sense here in a bit. 10 worst Amazon S3 breaches. So things like the uh, US voter records, WWE, Verizon, Time Warner Cable. It's a fun read. Check it out. Link below. This is a whole thing, by the way. There's a subculture of hackers called leak hunters, and they live for this stuff. Oh, and by the way, you've got to see this. If you want to get an idea of how many insecure S3 configurations there are out there, there's a whole website telling you where they are. <laughs> Check it out, link below. It's a site called Gray Hat Warfare, because it says, it says, cause white is boring. No, it's not. But you can literally search through public buckets, which by the way, <laughs> when we're talking about S3, you'll create buckets and you'll put your stuff in those buckets. So that's why they're saying buckets. That's kind of cute. So I could legit search for network chuck. <laughs> look, someone has a network chuck YouTube logo on their site. Let's go look. Okay, interesting. Or I could search for things like, uh, I don't know, password and specify a TXT file. Only registered users, okay. Now let's try. That's a lot of password files. You could have a lot of fun digging through this site. You're welcome. Oh, and by the way, there's a really cool command line tool that allows you to do something similar to this, but in a very fun, automated way. Very simple. I'll show you at the end of the video. So stick around. Now, before we get started, I'm kind of running empty. So we need some coffee because everything in IT requires coffee, right? Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm going to go downstairs. Oh, do a Recording. Now I have a confession. Everything I'm about to show you in this video, I learned from IT Pro by ACI Learning. It's 200 okay. Grind this real quick. It smells amazing. All right, coffee is ground. So I'm going through their course, the Intro to AWS Pen Testing. It's kind of amazing. Daniel Lowry takes what I'm about to show you in this video and shows you so much more, goes so much deeper. And he doesn't just stop at hacking S3. He shows you how to hack all kinds of AWS services like Lambda, EC2, oh yeah, check this out. And he shows you some amazing labs you can jump into. It's seriously a fun course. If you wanna learn beyond what I'm showing you in this video, definitely check it out. Also, IT Pro doesn't just stop at hacking. They have pretty much everything you'll ever want to learn in IT. From the very beginning with A+, and some IT fundamentals to more advanced things like CCNA, Python, Azure, and of course, hacking. And they've got your back with practice exams to make sure you're ready for that exam because those things are expensive. And they have labs, built-in labs, so you can practice and solidify those things that you're learning. Mmm, man, it smells so good. Can't wait to have this. Now, if you want to learn IT like me, check out IT Pro by ACI Learning, link below. And if you use my code network Chuck, you'll get 30% off forever. And thank you to IT Pro by ACI Learning for sponsoring this video. Now we can start hacking. So to hack the cloud, what do you need? This actually is pretty awesome because you really don't need anything. You just need a computer. You can use Windows, Mac, Linux, but I will say to have a better time and to use the command line tool I'm gonna to mention later at the end of the video, you'll want to be using some flavor of Linux. It could be Ubuntu, it could be Kali. And if you don't have Linux and you wanna use it, I've got a video here that'll show you how. Now later on, if you wanna maximize fun, you'll also want a free AWS account. Trust me, what you'll be able to do with this is kind of crazy. Now besides coffee, we're ready to go. Let's start hacking. Now before we can hack Amazon S3 buckets, we gotta create one, know how it works, know how it ticks. Let's do it right now. I'm here in my Amazon portal and I wanna search for S3 in the search bar. There it is, the S3 service. From here, I'll create a new bucket. And by the way, you can follow along if you want, just to, you know, have experience with it. Once you set up your free AWS account, create a bucket. I'll name it something buckety, I don't know. There is a hole in my bucket. 
This does have to be unique. There's no way that's not taken. Oh, it might be available, we'll see. Now that's pretty much all we have to do. Now one of the main causes for people getting hacked with their Amazon S3 buckets is misconfiguration. Now once upon a time, a lot of these security measures right here were not default. So notice right here at the bottom, the default behavior is to block all public access to our buckets. So if I did nothing and I created this, you couldn't get to it. And this default behavior is kind of great. It even default enables encryption for me. That's pretty cool. But just know that hasn't always been the case. That hasn't always been the default. So currently right now out in the wild, there are S3 buckets created back in the day who don't have these settings enabled. And that's why they get hacked. Now, another reason companies get hacked is that configuring security for S3 buckets is kind of complicated. If you're trying to allow access while blocking everything else, in the process of allowing the right things through, you might accidentally leave things open. This happens all the time. I'll create my bucket. Oh yeah, I acknowledge I did something bad. See, they have all these things here because people have done this. It's been a problem. Create a bucket. Aw oh, man, the name exists. Let me try Dear Liza. That's right, right? That's the song? That's how it goes? I don't know. Create a bucket. Nailed it. Got it. Now with that bucket made, here it is. I'm gonna jump into it. Now, a couple of things I wanna show you real quick. First, we can upload a file. It's just like Google Drive. Upload, add a file. What should I add? Oh, this one. You're gonna like this one. I'll upload that. Done. Now let's get back to our bucket. And there it is, bigboynick.png. Let's go ahead and click on that object real quick. I wanna show you a few things, and this will help us in our challenge later. Notice here on the right, this object, which is the picture, the file, has its own URL. You could actually click on this and access it yourself, or type it in. But notice what happens. Even though I publicly made this bucket public, <laughs> if I click on this, it will not work. Access denied. I told you S3 is complex. So to make this public, let me show you what I have to do. And I'm hoping this will illustrate why people mess this up. If I go to my bucket, I can go to permissions and then go to policy. I can edit this policy. And just to kind of show you how crazy this is, here's some policy examples. And it's like code, like it's JSON. And people can screw this up, trying to give other companies access, other accounts, just one little typo and you're done. Now me, I'm gonna make it publicly available for you to read it. So I'm gonna add that policy right now. Looks just like that. Click on save, done. So now when I get back to big boy Nick and I click on this, it should work. Now I'm not gonna do it. I want you to try it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. We captured that during one of our morning meetings. Now think about this. If I messed up my permissions and this bucket had very sensitive things inside, like credentials, technical documents, someone could have a really bad day and it's happened time and time again. So now that you know a bit about S3, let's get you hacking, quick coffee break. Our journey begins at a website. I got a link below or you can just type it in. It's called flaws. Dot cloud. This is kind of incredible. This is gonna be a lap, a challenge, a CTF for you right now. This guy, Scott Piper created it. He's amazing. Show him some love. But first, try to hack his AWS S3 stuff. He said you could. Now what I'll do here is just give you enough information to get set up and started and then walk you through the first two challenges and then let you loose. There are six in total and they're crazy fun. And by the end of it, you can say, yeah, I have hacked the cloud and I know how to do other stuff too. So let's get started. First, we wanna get to our command line. I'll go ahead and fire up my command line, my favorite place to be. Now first, you're actually missing one thing, the AWS CLI. Thankfully, it's really easy to set up. Just one command. Actually, I'll put a link below to this page here. If I go back, Install update, you can install it for Linux, Mac, and Windows. We're doing Linux, obviously. I'm just gonna copy this command, copy, and paste that here in my terminal, and it's doing its thing. Oh, pseudo password, awesome. And you'll know what's working when you type in AWS, and it's like, hey, uh, do you need some help? Are you okay? So you know you're good, if, that, if it does that. So we have our AWS CLI installed, now what? <laughs> because we have, our flaws thing here, our flaws.cloud website. It doesn't really give you anything. It does give you some hints if you wanna get some hints, but it's like, just hack me, do whatever you want, but you gotta figure it out. Now, since we are trying to hack S3 buckets, we can assume flaws.cloud has something to do with buckets. Like maybe flaws.cloud is pointed at an S3 bucket, the URL itself. And that's what people will do actually. Flaws.cloud, which is a you know domain name, a DNS name, might be configured to point at an AWS bucket name. And people will often host static websites like this on an AWS bucket. It's a common thing. So our first task is to figure out, is flaws.cloud using an S3 bucket? Super easy to do that, check this out. Here in our terminal, we're gonna use a good old command called nslookup, or name server lookup, it's a DNS tool. We're gonna do nslookup flaws.cloud. This will look at that DNS entry and tell us what IP address is associated with it. Ready, set, go. Okay, we got a bunch of answers. Now what? <laughs> well, now we're gonna take that IP address. We'll just take the first one. We'll copy it, and we'll do nslookup again. Now, when you do nslookup against an IP address, you're doing a reverse DNS lookup. I'll show you what I mean. Ready, set, go. 
Hold on a second. Did you see this? We can see that this IP address belongs to S3. This is an S3 website. So now that we know that flaws.cloud is pointing to an S3 bucket, we can bust out some AWS CLI skills to uh, test some things. Are you ready? We'll start out with this, AWS S3. So AWS CLI can be used for a lot of things in the AWS. Specifically, we are worried about and care about S3. So we're using that. Then we'll do LS for list. What this will do is look at an S3 bucket and list the contents if we have permission to. And then we'll put in the URL for the flaws.cloud bucket. Now the way you do that is with their specific URL scheme. It'll be S3 colon whack whack. So instead of saying HTTPS colon whack whack, you're saying S3 colon whack whack. So S3 colon whack whack laws dot cloud. Now let's see what happens. Hit enter. Oh. Okay, you're probably gonna get this. What it's telling us is that we simply do not have any credentials configured. We haven't done anything yet like that yet, but we don't need credentials to access a public bucket. So we'll just tell it not to try and use credentials with this command. So we'll just hit the up arrow to bring our command back up and we'll do a dash dash no dash sign dash request. Now let's see what happens. Do you see that? You just found your first leaky bucket. Look at all this stuff. And I'm guessing this little secret file right here is something we care about. Let's see if we can grab that file and we'll try it with the AWS CLI. Just as before, we'll do AWS S3, but instead of LS for list, we'll do CP for copy. And same deal, we'll do S3 colon whack whack laws dot cloud and we'll do a forward slash and specify that file, let's grab it. And then same thing as before, we'll do a dash dash no dash sign dash request. And then right after that, we have to tell it what file to copy to the file name. So we'll do the secret.html. Got it. If we type in ls, we can see it right there. We just downloaded it. Ho ho ho. Now let's uh let's open it. Open the secret.html. Ha <laughs> ha! We just unlocked level two. Now that was an example of finding a public bucket via CLI, listing the contents and plundering it a bit. We found a leak and we collected some of those documents, those files. Level two gets even more fun. Let's try it out. Now you might notice that at this point to maximize your fun, I mentioned this, you will want an AWS account. It's free, it does require a credit card, but it won't charge you anything unless you want it to, but you just need something. So actually, if you don't already have one, go get it set up right now because you can't continue without it. And go ahead and pause the video and come back and see me, pause. Unpause. So now you have an AWS account, I'm assuming. I'll put a link below to how to get it. Now, once you have your AWS account and you're logging to the portal just like this, we're gonna go to the search bar and search for IAM or Identity Access Management. Click on that service. Here, we're gonna set up a new user that we can use with our AWS CLI. This is quick and painless, trust me. We're just gonna go on the left here and click on users, users. Click on add users, put in a username, Bernard Hackwell, S3 Hacker. Click on next. And then real quick before we're done, we're gonna give Mr. Bernard Hackwell or whatever user you're creating access to do some S3 things. We'll give him some policy stuff. Click on attach policies directly. We'll search for a policy, we'll say S3, and we'll just say Amazon S3 full access. With that selected, we'll click on next and then create user. One more thing we have to do with our user created, there he is, I'm gonna click on him and then click on security credentials and then scroll down to where I see access keys, right here. We're gonna need some keys, a pair of keys, not a parakeet, <laughs> that sounded weird. We're gonna click on create access key. We're gonna be using this for the command line interface, so we'll select that right here. Scroll down and say, yeah, I understand, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> click on next. We can describe it real quick. Stuff, mind your business, AWS. Create access key. And grab the secret access key as well. Now with our credentials ready, we're gonna configure an AWS CLI profile. Super easy, check this out. Type in AWS, configure, we'll do dash dash profile, name our profile, I'll say Bernard Hackwell, and then it will ask us for some stuff, like that key we created. So I'm gonna grab the access key ID, and then also the secret access key, paste that there. Everything else can be default, just kinda enter through, and we got it. That's all we needed, your profile, your access key, your account is ready. Now we can hack some more flaws. Now looking back at our level two page, you can try and figure this out yourself. It does take a step forward, a bit more advanced, but let me walk you through it right now. So I'm guessing that we're, we're gonna wanna take this URL and examine it at the top here. So level two, blah, blah, all that stuff. Let's first make sure it is indeed an S3 bucket. So what do we do? We use NSLOOKUP, NSLOOKUP, Let's take out the uh, forward slash and the HTTP. We just need that DNS name. Okay, there's our IP address. Let's take a look at that. Let's do a reverse DNS lookup. NS lookup, paste the IP address. Indeed, it is an S3 bucket right here. So now what do you say we try and just list the contents like we did before, like in the first challenge? Can't be that easy, right? I mean, that's worth a try. So AWS S3 LS, we'll do S3 colon whack whack that URL. And we'll do that same thing, dash dash no dash sign 
dash request to not use an account to not care about it. Let's see what happens. At first glance, we're like, huh, access denied. So this bucket is not publicly available. What do we do? We'd keep trying. We try harder, right? Now we already kind of have a hint for what to do. This challenge called for having an AWS account. So we think, might think, ah, maybe that involves my account. Now, as far as we know, our account doesn't have access to this, but let's, let's just try it. That's what hacking is, right? Just trying things. So let's try it out. To use our profile that we just created, we'll do this, AWS S3. Just like before, we'll type in ls, and then we'll do a dash dash profile, specify our profile, mine was Bernard Hackwell, whatever yours was, put it there, and then same thing as earlier. We'll grab that URL, leave out the no sign request because this time we are using credentials. And with an account in place, let's see if something happens. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, right? But it does. Let's jump in there and take a look. So we can see here, we have our secret for this level. Let's download it. Let's hit the up arrow, change our LS to a CP. At the very end, we'll give it a location to save it to. So we'll just call it the secret 2html We got that sucker. Let's see if we have it here. LS, there it is. Wait, no, it's not. <laughs> Why did I say that? It's not there. Let's try it again. Oh, I forgot to put the file at the end. Forward slash that craziness. There we go. LS, there it is. So let's open the secret too. Yes, we found the secret file, we passed level two. But why? Let's go to this URL and see. What we're seeing here is an old configuration that doesn't really like shout out at you anymore, but it used to be front and center. And it was, you could allow any authenticated AWS user to access your bucket. And you would configure this thinking, oh yeah, I'm adding a bit of security. Only authenticated people on my account can access this. I'm pretty secure. But actually what you were doing was allowing any authenticated AWS person access to your bucket. As long as someone has AWS, AWS credentials, they can access your stuff. And that's what happened here. Now, the good news for security is that it's kind of hard to make this setting happen now. The bad news for security is that there are still buckets out there that would configure the old way and they may not know about that. Now, again, you can stop watching me and do this yourself or let's continue on to level three. And actually, you know, just try it yourself. If you hit a snag, come back and, and watch me. I'll, I'll be here, coffee in hand, ready to go. Level three is actually really fun. It's uh, it's definitely harder, but let's do the same steps as before. Let's grab our level three URL. At this point, we can safely assume it's probably a bucket, but let's just check anyhow. And let's look up. We'll take out all our dashes and HTTP nonsense. Let's see, there's our IP address and let's look up. And yes, indeed, it is a S3 bucket. Let's try and list the contents. AWS S3 LS. Let's use our credentials just in case. Profile Bernard Hockwell, and then the URL. S3 colon whack whack, that crazy URL pointing to a bucket. Take out the HTTP nonsense once more. Been kind of tired of that. And let's see. Okay, did we win? <laughs> it kind of feels like we did, right? That wasn't a challenge. But notice we don't have um, we don't have the win. There's nothing here. There's no secret. We're looking for the secret file or something like that. Now at this point you might get kind of stuck. But notice one thing. Look at this right here. Git. If you're not familiar with Git, it's what coders or programmers use to update their code. They write new code and they use Git to push it, pull it down, update it, all that stuff. It looks like this website was updated using Git. There could be something with this. Let's see, let's walk through it. Now you may not know what to do, it's fine. This can be fun just to watch it, trust me. Now first, there's a new thing we can do. Earlier we were copying individual files. We could actually sync this entire thing with this command, AWS. Actually, we'll just do an up arrow, up arrow. We'll go to the beginning of our line with control A and we'll change LS to sync, just like that. Oh wait, I forgot to put it where it should sync to. I'll just put a new directory, I'll do a period forward slash, we'll call it the secret stuff. Enter, whoo, it synced all that stuff to our directory. Awesome, so if I do ls where I'm at right now, where's that directory? Oh, there it is, there's the directory. We'll uh, cd into that directory, cd the secret stuff, and let's ls this. Now, we just saw this, nothing crazy, but we can't see the, uh, the GitHub file. Well, it had a period in front of it, it was hidden. So if we do ls-al, we can see those hidden files. There's that git directory. Let's see if we can jump in there real quick. We'll do a cd.git ls, huh, there's some stuff here. Now at this point, this is where you just have to get curious. You'd have to jump around, look around, jump in each directory and see, hey, what's going on, what's here? Now a handy thing you could do is simply type in the uh, command tree, which will list all the contents of this directory. Bam. So we got some info there. So like there's a, a description file, maybe there's something in there. Let's do a cat description. Um, nothing, we could cat config. Really nothing there. What do you say we check the logs? So we had a logs directory and it drills down into the refs directory and then the heads directory, finally to a master file. Let's go there real quick. So we'll cd to logs and then to refs and then to heads. <laughs> and if we ls there, we have a master file. Let's cat that, cat master, cat master. Okay, 
something interesting happening. So as I mentioned before, programmers and coders will use Git to push their code and they'll often make a comment about it telling like what this was for. Uh, pushing the config, I added a banner to the website, that kind of thing. We see something here. I love seeing an oops. <laughs> I love that they typed oops. Oops, accidentally added something I shouldn't have. Hmm, okay. Now at this point, if you're not familiar with Git or how to use it, you might be like, I don't know what to do with that. And you would have to Google that around. Like Google, like what, what do I do with this kind of stuff? How do I how do I find things from this? But I can tell you right now, with Git, we can take this information right here. We knew that there was at some point a commit that had information that they don't want us to see. Is it still there? This right here is the hash for that commit this person submitted. We can do what's called a git checkout to uh, check it out. But we check out actually means you're checking out the code, kind of like you would check out a library book. Let's try it out. So what we'll do is we're gonna grab this and just copy it, starting with the F and all the way to the 6.1. And it's okay if this feels unfamiliar. You're learning something right now. And let's get back to our main directory. So we'll do cd dot dot, cd dot dot. Let's go back a lot. Cool, we're back at secret stuff. What we'll do now is type in git, checkout and we'll paste. Now this assumes you have git installed. If you don't have git installed, just sudo apt install git. And we'll see if we can check this code out, this commit. Okay, we have it. So what that did is we checked out that commit and now we're there in the code. We're there where that change was. It's kind of like we went back in the past, this person saved a new file, but we're able to go back to the auto save before and see what they didn't want us to see. Let's see what they didn't want us to see. Let's type in ls. There's something new. Do you see it? Right here, we have a file called access keys. That sounds pretty promising, right? That's a big oops. <coughs> <sighs> Let's cat that file. Cat access keys. <laughs> that sure looks like stuff we wanna keep. Let's grab that. I'm gonna put it into a uh, file for my stuff real quick. Nano, I'll put it in my home directory. Secret keys.txt, paste it there. Cool, safekeeping. So now what do we do with those keys? <laughs> I'm curious, right? Like what, what should we do? We don't have another bucket to look at. Maybe if you look at this same bucket with these new credentials, we'll see something more that we don't already see. So we should actually right now configure a new AWS profile, use that profile and try to look at it again. Let's do it right now. So AWS configure dash dash profile. We'll call this gotcha. And let me open that file real quick. I'll put up a new terminal. What was it called again? Cat secret keys. There we go. I'll grab the access key, paste that there, and grab the secret key. This kind of feels like secret agent stuff, right? It's kind of fun. Paste that there, default everything else. Cool, we have our new profile. Let me clear the screen real quick. Now, let's see if we can see some new things. So AWS S3, we'll do a LS just to see what we have there, LS. We'll do a dash dash profile, specify, what did I call that profile? Oh, gotcha, <laughs> okay, gotcha. And then we'll uh, try to do something with that. URL, the same bucket, which I totally forgot what it was. Oh, it's up here. Grab that, painstakingly remove all the other stuff. And now we're here, moment of truth. Will we see something else? Okay, nothing new there, but there's one thing we can try. Check this out. If we do AWS S3 LS, specify our profile, gotcha. And that's all we do. And we don't specify a bucket. It'll simply list all the buckets for our account. The account we are specifying here and that we have access to. Now, because we grab those credentials, we could possibly see some new buckets. What do you say we try it? <laughs> you seeing this? A whole bunch of new buckets. So now we're on level three. <laughs> we wanna get to level four. Level four is right here. What do you say we grab that URL? Let's grab it, navigate to it. And we did it. Lesson learned, people leak their AWS keys. And they try to cover up their mistakes without revoking the keys. So just like <laughs> I showed you my keys for Bernard Hackwell here in this video, I'm gonna revoke those because they're definitely leaked right now. Now I'm not gonna show you four through six. I want you to tackle these yourself and let me know how it goes in the comments below. But if you do wanna walk through a four through six, you can check it out on IT Pro. Daniel Lowry walks you through it. It's amazing. Now here we are at the end of the video and I did promise a cool CLI tool you can use to search a ton of S3 buckets like a hacker. It looks pretty cool. Let's try it out. Now, let me find my page. Oh, so many tabs open. The tool is called AWS Bucket Dump. I'm not gonna walk you through every detail of like how to use it, but I will show you how to set it up and how to run the first command. Now, what it will actually do is search a ton of buckets. And if you want, you can go ahead and download all the contents of those buckets automatically. Kind of powerful, it'll fill up your hard drive real quick. Be careful, but let's install it real quick. So first, let me uh, get over here, clear my terminal, get back home, CD space. Two things real quick you wanna make sure you have installed. First of all, Python 3. So sudo apt install Python 3. Got it. We we'll also wanna have Python 3-pip installed. Pip is an installer for Python. I don't have it installed. I'm gonna do that right now. And then finally, you wanna install the Python virtual environment. So sudo apt install Python 3-venv for virtual environment. Perfect. Now we can clone this repository. We're gonna go over here and copy the URL, link below, and we'll do a git. See, Git shows up again, look at that. Git clone, paste that in here, 
Download the project for us. If we type in ls, there it is, AWS bucket dump. Let's go ahead and jump in there. CD AWS bucket dump. Now looking at the GitHub, they do show you how to set this up. First, we'll create our Python virtual environment. We'll do Python 3 dash m, type in venv, and then right after that, we'll name it environment env. Then we'll activate it. Source env forward slash bin forward slash activate. It's been activated. Now I'm not gonna go into the specifics of why we did a Python virtual environment. Just know it's gonna make it work well. Don't worry about it. And then we'll install the requirements like it tells us to. So we'll do pip3 install dash r requirements, ah, requirements.txt. Now that's pretty much it. It's ready to go. Now what we have to do is figure out how to use this tool. Now, thankfully they do include a one-liner just to try it out. Now again, I'm not gonna show you the ins and outs but we can try this real quick. Paste this command in just like it is. And just a real quick overview of what's happening here. Here with dash L, we have a list of possible bucket names we can look for. And then dash G, we have a list of interesting keywords we could look for. So you can add to this, you might be targeting a certain company because you're doing a pen test for them because they're letting you because it's ethical. And you would use these keywords that are related to the company. Maybe it's a bread company. You're like, bread, what are some bread names? <laughs> Fikasha, is Fikasha a word bread name? Wheat. Anyways, let's run this command. Command. Check it out. It's going through a ton of S3 buckets and trying to grab things. Okay, it's been downloading stuff. I need to stop it. Let's see if anything uh, is here. Let's ls. I got a new directory called one. Let's jump in there. CD one. Whoa, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, let's go into Espanol. It's pretty crazy. Can I open that file? Open that Excel file? Uh, I don't have a open office or anything. <laughs> Interesting. This is fun. Anyways, that's a pretty cool tool. That's the video. Go hack some clouds ethically. Of course.